We recently bought the brand new Roomba S9 Plus and put it through all of our usual tests, and I have to say, I was extremely impressed. I think that Roomba has done something really special with this redesign, and as we'll see in the test, it goes far deeper than the new look. I'm excited to get into it, so links in the description, and let's get started. So the S9 Plus comes out only seven months after the release of the i7 Plus, which also had a self-emptying bin. And I will be making some comparisons to the i7 in this video, but I'll also be posting an in-depth comparison of the S9 Plus and the i7 Plus on Tuesday, as well as a review of the M6 later on, which works in tandem with the S9. So be sure to subscribe for that. First, let's get into the basic features. So the S9 Plus has been fundamentally redesigned, and part of that redesign is the new shape, which is supposed to give it better edge cleaning and corner cleaning performance. It also has moved its dual brush roll to the front and made it 30% wider. The 550 milliliter dustpan is a totally new design. The edge brush has finally got a makeover, and not just in design. They've also toned down the RPM, so it no longer spins like crazy, which scattered debris, so that's a big upgrade as far as I'm concerned. Like the i7 Plus, it also comes with a self-emptying bin called the Clean Base, where the robot automatically returns to and empties the contents of its bin after every cleaning. And spoiler alert, I really love the Clean Base. We first saw it on the i7 Plus, and other than a slight redesign with a location of the holes, the main change on the S9's Clean Base was an upgraded filter. So right out of the box, the first thing I tested was the power, and it's a beast. It has two power settings and an auto mode, but on high power, we measured it at a whopping 22 CFM, which is the highest I've ever measured. For context, the Roomba 690 measured 7 CFM, the 980 and i7 were 17 CFM, and the previous champion was the Neato D7, which measured 20 CFM. So we have a new, most powerful robot vacuum. We saw that power manifest itself in the crevice pickup test, where it did better than any robot vacuum that we've tested. And there was another area where the huge amount of power showed itself, but we'll get into that in a minute. We tested its debris pickup on both hard floors and carpet. The first thing to note was that it had a nice, clean pickup that didn't scatter debris. This is impressive because older generations of Roombas had a bull in a china shop side brush that I always felt made a mess before cleaning a mess. The S9, however, was nice and smooth, and the wider brush roll combined with the power for a truly impressive pickup. I would say that in its low power mode, which we measured at only 8 CFM of airflow, it didn't seem strong enough to be all that useful on hard floors or carpet. It may be quiet on low power, but we found much better results with high power, or even better, just leave it on auto mode, which is where it will automatically adjust the suction depending on the floor type. I did notice that it didn't seem to like larger debris, either on carpets or hard floors. Don't get me wrong, it picked it all up, even in the somewhat unrealistic amounts in our tests, but you could tell that it didn't like larger debris, and it made some crunching noises when it didn't pick it up. It's not something I've noticed with other robot vacuums. It's not a deal breaker by any means, but it is worth mentioning. The thing that impressed me the most with the S9 was probably its carpet deep cleaning ability. For the deep clean test, I take exactly 100 grams of sand and embed it into pretty thick medium pile carpet, run the robot for 5 minutes, and then weigh the dust bins. The highest score I've ever seen is 79%, and I had pretty much given up hope that robot vacuums could ever really deep clean carpets. But I tested the S9 Plus two times and got 93% and 96% each time for an average of 94.5%. I'm assuming it's the result of the massive power combined with the apparently closer to the ground brushes which might explain the large debris issue from earlier. In any case, kudos to iRobot for making me believe that robots can actually replace regular vacuums in this area. Another area that really impressed me was its hair pickup. I should mention that its exhaust is redesigned and diffused, so there wasn't any blowing around of light debris, which is not something you can take for granted, as most robot vacuums do this to some extent. I have been looking for a way to standardize this hair wrap test, so I started out with one gram of seven inch hair, which I assumed would be way too much, because previous generations of Roombas would not have done well with that much hair. But to my surprise, there was virtually no tangles on the side brush or the brush roll itself. There was some in the axles, which Roombas are kind of bad about, and if you own a Roomba, check your axles. It's an important maintenance step that will improve the life of your robot. But even here, it was less than you typically see. I honestly don't think that any other robot vacuum I have could have done so well with this exact test. Moving on to navigation, in terms of coverage, it had a really good sense of where it had and hadn't been. It makes a broad strokes pass first, and then it goes directly to the places it knows it missed, before following it all up with an edge cleaning pass at the end. And it does so without wasting time, which is an issue with the i7, which I'll talk more about Tuesday. 
I was worried that the new D-shape would make it a little more cumbersome for fitting around chairs and table legs, but if you look at it, the Roomba is less wide by about an inch than the other D-shaped bots, which makes a lot of difference for fitting in tight spaces. I found that it was better than any round robot, including the i7 with edge and corner cleaning, partly because of its shape. It wasn't perfect, but it was a huge improvement over the i7 Plus. The battery life on the S9 was better in a few ways. The i7 only ran for about 75 minutes on its one power setting. With the S9, there was a range of 120 minutes on low to 50 minutes on its max power, which is actually pretty decent considering how much suction it has on high power. In any case, I would recommend using the auto setting in order to optimize both performance and battery life though it does also have recharge and resume, where it returns to the base to recharge and then resumes exactly where it left off. So battery life is a lot less important than it used to be. The app is pretty cool. You can schedule cleanings. It's compatible with Amazon Alexa and all that stuff. But you can also divide your house into rooms on the map. So you can tell the Roomba to clean certain rooms and not others, which is pretty useful. And it will remember up to 10 floor plans for multi-floor homes, which is not something every robot vacuum does. It's a testament to how cool the S9 is that I haven't actually talked about the clean base yet. I mean, I love the clean base. It functions well. I didn't have any trouble with it finding the base. And the strong suction motor in the clean base really does suck out the contents of the bin. And as I said with the i7 Plus, it really feels like we're so close to robots being truly autonomous and going about their business with minimal input from us. You do have to buy and remove bags, but they say you can get 30 bins full in one bag, so that's $16.99 for about three bags. That's about $68 a year. So the S9 Plus is crazy expensive. You can see the current prices in the description, but it's probably the most expensive vacuum in the world right now. True, it's only a few dollars more than the i7 Plus was at its peak, but still, it's a lot of money. On the other hand, it's probably the best robot vacuum in the world right now, and I know for sure it's the only one I would trust if deep cleaning carpets was a concern. And it's got a self-emptying bin, for crying out loud. So though worth is subjective, you can make a strong case for the price of the S9 Plus. Be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars to keep up with all the latest robot vacuums as well as the i7 S9 competition and the M6 review coming up. Thanks for watching.